Hey guys, it's Denise from Lumahead.com and in this video we're going to be making a very basic tube sock with no heel because I know you guys don't like those. No folded cuffs because I'm not a fan and a very beautiful, easy to do knit stitch. Yep, just knit stitches here and these nice ridges are a cool trick we're going to do and I'm going to show you step by step. Now for supplies and more information, check out the description and the website lumahead.com forward slash two dash socks. And I want to give a special thanks to promiselearningatl.com for covering the cost of closed captioning. Feel free to use any yarn you have on hand. I prefer a blend of acrylic and wool for my socks. I'm using Sheepish by VK Howell. If you don't have this in your neighborhood, just any yarn with a blend. This has acrylic, wool, and rayon. I just find that these blends have a little more bounce. That's a personal opinion, but again, feel free to use whatever you have on hand. All right, let's start with the cast on. We're gonna be knitting with two strands of yarn since it's worsted weight, and first, Let's secure it to the anchor peg. I'm gonna be using a very basic knot. If you like using slip knots, that's fine. Take the working yarn between the first and last peg. And now we're gonna do a drawstring cast on. So bring it back to the front and you're gonna zigzag your yarn in and out, in and out, in and out between your pegs and keep going until you get back to the very first peg. And then you're gonna take your yarn behind that peg, bring it back forward and lay it loosely over the existing loops. And now you're gonna knit off every peg with two loops. In other words, you're knitting off every other peg. Continue knitting off until you get all the way to the last peg, which is peg 24, and you're going to put your yarn over the next three pegs. Knit off 24, and we're going to start row one, where we're going to use the U-wrap version of the knit stitch. You're going to skip that first peg, which is right here. You're just leaving the yarn over it. It only has one loop, and you're going to go to peg two, and you're going to knit off that peg. This is the only time you're gonna be skipping peg one is on this row one. So you skip that first peg, you knit off the second, and you're gonna be using the U-wrap version of the knit stitch around this whole entire row. All right, so let's start. For the knit stitch, you're going to half wrap your peg and knit off as such, knit off. Go to your next, Next peg, I can't talk today. I don't know what's going on. All right, knit off. You're now on peg four. And remember that you need to finish your entire row. So go all the way to peg 24 and then you're ready for row two. And this time we're gonna use the E-wrap version of the knit stitch. So here you did peg 24 and now you're gonna go, you're starting with peg right here. I have peg one marked with a yellow stitch marker and I'll explain this later. Take your working yarn and completely wrap every one of your pegs. So all the way from peg one to peg 24, you're going to completely wrap your pegs. And this is the difference between the U-wrap and the E-wrap. With the E-wrap, you're wrapping all of your pegs and then you knit off. The U-wrap, you did every peg one at a time. Now after I've wrapped all my pegs, I prefer to knit off the last peg that I wrapped first. That's going to secure my yarn because if I don't do this and my yarn gets loose, it will unravel all of my pegs and that's no fun. Alright, now you're ready to knit starting with peg one and on these first few pegs, go ahead and pull on your loops and that's going to Tighten up the stitch so you don't have that ugly line between peg one and peg 24. All right, so you knit off all of your pegs like this. 
and we're ready to take the knot off the anchor peg because your yarn is secure and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Now all you're going to do is repeat rows 1 and 2 until you have a total of 80 rows. So we're knitting with two strands as one and some of you may have noticed I made a little boo-boo here and I knit off one of my strands. No biggie. I went back to get it. I remount that so I have two strands again and I can knit off two as one and continue. Alright, now remember to repeat rows 1 and 2 until you have 80 rows. And once you've got row 80, how about we take a look and see what the fabric looks like. Now it's easier to see the difference between the two stitches, the longer one versus the shorter one. And you can see the effect of the ridges. It's like a bumpy type of fabric and it's really soft. It feels really good and it looks very different than if you had only used the E-wrap or only the U-wrap. It's time to move on to the cuff and we're going to be using a rib stitch which is made up of one purl and two knits. And we're going to follow the same formula of one row of U-wrap knits and one row of E-wrap knits. So let's start with that purl one by putting the working yarn under this first loop with your hook you're going to scoop up that yarn and create a new loop. Take off the old one, put the new one, and pull. That's your one purl. Now let's do the two knits, and we're going to do two U-wrap knit stitches because this row is a U-wrap row. Now, I told you I would explain why I had the stitch markers. For me, this is what works best. And I know for some people there's no need for stitch markers, but my personal case, I need them. So every time I have a stitch marker, I'm going to do one purl. And when there are no stitch markers, I'm going to do two knits. So I don't have to worry about keeping up with those or getting lost. All I have to keep in mind is whether I'm in a row of U-wrap or on a row of E-wrap. And for that, I keep a notebook. So you guys figure out what's going to work best for you to keep up with your rows. Again, this row we're doing one purl and two U-wraps. So as you can see, that's the pattern that I follow here. All the way to the end of the row when I'm on peg 24. Now I'm going to start another rib stitch. So here's my purl because I'm on peg one and my pattern is one purl and two knits. But this row now is an E-wrap row. So when I finish my purl stitch, I'm going to do two E-wrap knit stitches. All right, so I wrap those two pegs and I'm going to knit them off. I'm giving you some options. You can knit them off first or you can leave them there. So my next stitch, of course, again, is my purl because I'm on a purl one, two knits. And then my next two stitches are two E-wrap knit stitches. So I'm going to knit off my E-wrap and again, start my pattern, one purl and two knits. And in this case, it's two E-wrap knits because I'm still on the same row. So I go to my next two and I'm going to wrap my pegs, one and two, and knit off. And again, like I said, 
You don't have to knit them off now. You can knit them off later. You just leave them there like this. Here's a good example. I'm going to finish my row, do all my knits and all of my pearls till I finish with peg 24, which is where I'm going to do those last two E-wrap knit stitches. And then I'm going to start knitting off once I finish my row. All right, and to finish the cuff, you need to do 10 more rows. So you're done when you have 90 rows, 80 of rows one and two, and 10 of the cuff, which is the rib stitch. When you're done with those additional 10 rows, we're ready for the super stretchy cast off. And some of you are familiar with this cast off I have done some modifications and so it's a bit of a hack. You're going to have to pay attention. First, take the working yarn and wrap it around your loom about two times. I do a little less, but just to be sure, you should go ahead and wrap it twice. Get your scissors, cut off the yarn, and then get your hook. And we're going to start by skipping peg one and taking the yarn and putting it under peg two and with your hook you're going to scoop it up and feed it through that loop from the bottom up and then you're going to pull on it nice and tight and take it back to the one you skipped which was peg one and from the top you're going to scoop it downward all right let's do that again pull on it skip that peg go to the next one and with your hook here was peg one you skipped two you're going to scoop it up from the bottom up tighten it go back to the one that you skipped and now you're going to scoop it from the top down right here so get your hook and from the top, you're scooping down. Now you're going to leave that stitch that's on peg one by itself. You're not going to bother it. You're going to skip the next peg and you're now on peg four. You're going to scoop from the bottom up. So when you're going from right to left, up. And when your yarn is on your left side, you're going to scoop it down. And now here's a little hack. I'm going to take off that loop and I'm going to pull on my yarn before I go to the next thing, which is again to skip the next peg and then scoop it up from the bottom up. Pull on my yarn, always pull on it and tighten things. Take it back to the one I skipped and scoop my working yarn down to feed it through that loop. And once I do that, I tighten it, go back to the other one, take it off, pull on it again, skip a peg, scoop upward. And I learned this technique from Amanda Pratt. It was already different from the original Super Stretchy Bind Off. So... I guess this is hack number two. It works really well and you'll see that your edge looks nice and clean on this large gauge loom. And so I so appreciate Amanda and um, look her up. She's Hypnotic Hysteria. Uh, she has a great channel with lots of good stuff. Anyway, so you skipped your peg and now you're going to scoop upward and feed your yarn through. Go back to the peg that you skipped and you're going to scoop from the top down and take off the loop that's on the peg and stretch it. So I'm always taking off the one that I left behind. All right, this was the first peg that I didn't remove. I left it. I'm going to scoop my yarn back up over uh, that one peg to peg 24. These are my last three. And this is what I do when I only have two left. 
I'm going to feed it through that one again, and I know it's like a lot. Then I take it completely off. And see, gives you a really nice edge. You know, if you don't do that, it looks kind of sloppy to me. I really like this one, and it's stretchy like it's supposed to be. And now I'm going to just finish by weaving in my ends. So with a crochet hook, you get that excess yarn and feed it through. Now I'm going to keep going downward, and then when I feel comfortable that I have fed it enough, then I am going to... I'm feeding it downward, then I'm going to turn it around and feed it upward. You can use the crochet hook, or in my particular case, I actually have learned to really like using my needle, and I now use only metal needles because I like those best. Um, if you're interested in metal needles, visit the store. There is a link in my description as well as the website, so you can get these really cool metal um, needles. Okay, like I said, I'm going to feed it downward, right, until I don't have any more. And then um, on the very last bit, I'm going to feed, I'm going to weave in that end upward and then get a pair of scissors and cut off the excess yarn. Now that we're done with the calf, we're ready to move on to the toe, which needs to be sewed on. So I know some of you guys hate to sew, but this is only a little bit. Now I want you so I want you to see the reverse side of the sock, which I think looks really good. It stretches nicely up here as well without losing its form, which is really, really good. Alright, so we're going to find that drawstring and pull on it. And you want to pull just enough to curve the edges so they round off, but you don't want to close it. So you might have to pull on the loops, that cast on loop, just a little bit now and then. And once you have it so that, like I said, it, your edges curve, but you haven't closed it like this. Just go ahead and continue shaping it till it's right. Get your needle and we're going to thread our needle with that drawstring. So you don't have to waste more yarn. And we're going to use that to sew. And as you can see, it's almost um, two-thirds of the size that it was before. Now take the working yarn back to the edge and you are going to then keep this nice and flat and we're going to use um, a whip stitch so first get your um, working yarn like secure so you're gonna sew that little edge nicely and get your uh, working yarn situated correctly and then we're going to do like a whip stitch. So you're going to bring it back and forth and back and forth. And like I said, create sort of like a whip stitch and try to stay within the, they're like little openings in your fabric right here from the, um, from the drawstring cast on. And you want to actually put your needle through those little holes twice because when you have your sock on you don't want them to open up and you know look really bad so in these little holes you're gonna put the needle in twice see right there and again and like I said it's like a whip stitch and it goes pretty fast that's all you need to do and that's it your sock is done just pull it back inside out and your socks are done I attach a button to mine you don't have to and I did want to share this with you I saw this on Facebook and had a big impression on me 